guys. Good evening. Uh, welcome. Um, I want to thank you for sharing your time with us. We're going to spend probably 20 to 30 minutes uh, talking about Google Lighthouse. Um, okay. Um, essentially about how we can start to uh, incorporate it within our automated tests. Okay. Whether you're writing a new automated tests um, or you already have existing automated tests and you've got some kind of continuous uh, integration pipeline. Um, all right, so just in terms of agenda, so we'll talk very briefly about what Lighthouse is. Uh, chances are probably a number of you are using this in one form or another. Um, so we'll talk about a little bit about what it is and why, uh, you know, why there is value in doing that. OK, um, we're going to look at four of the five categories uh, in particular. OK, so um, we're not going to look tonight at the PWA or the progressive uh, web app side of things. Uh, fundamentally because it doesn't return a specific score okay but we will talk about performance SEO uh, best practices and accessibility um, and then I'm going to show you how you can really really easily um, add uh, lighthouse checks into an automated test uh, using test evolve so we're going to use test evolve flare to very quickly uh, record a test adding checks as we go and then we'll play that test back and we'll look at the output from that in our halo um, real-time results dashboards okay um, and then really it's a case of starting to understand what Lighthouse is telling you right so um, interpreting your results we're going to finish the session by talking about perceived limitations uh, of Lighthouse and more often than not this isn't a limitation of Lighthouse itself but how we choose to use it all right so um, and this is where the interpretation comes into it. Okay, we don't want to be just chasing the scores constantly. We actually want to look at what Lighthouse is, is telling us. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to want to work with our development teams in a pragmatic sense, right? You're not going to want to, you're not going to need to or want to fix every single thing that it tells you. Um, okay, it's going to give you a range of different diagnostics and opportunities across those four main categories. Um, and as a tester, it's your job to work with your development team to prioritize the most important things. OK, and the scores will then take care of themselves. Right. When you start to fix these things and you run subsequent lighthouse checks, those scores are going to improve. Um, all right. So we'll talk about a nice, um, uh, a very simple click through uh, means of raising uh, lighthouse based bugs. Um, with your developers and then as I say you know looking at this idea of perceived limitations but really it's just about being sensible in terms of how we actually do uh, use Lighthouse um, in our workflow um, okay so let's um, let's start to explore what it is okay so understanding what it is why we should use it okay well Google themselves say all right and this is a so this is an open source Google tool right so Lighthouse is an open source automated tool for improving the quality of web pages um, all right so one of the limitations will be that this isn't going to work for mobile apps you know native apps um, but from a web point of view um, we can use this with uh, a desktop and a mobile uh, viewport in mind okay um, when we run a check it's going to give us actionable diagnostics things that we can uh, physically look to address we can fix we can improve all right across those four main categories um, we can run it on multiple pages so within a single test we don't just have to look at um, a single check um, per page in a test we can run an end-to-end -end journey so for an example um, on an e-commerce uh, checkout flow, end-to-end uh, -end test, you're going to maybe uh, go to the home page, you're going to probably search for a product, you'll get a uh, product um, product listing page, search results page, okay, you might select a product, you'll be on a product details page, you might select something, add to cart, you've got a cart page, you're going to begin the checkout flow, etc, etc. So in that one end-to-end -end journey, um, you can instigate changes on every one of those pages in a single test and then look at the uh, the whole output from that in a single report uh, which is really nice um, so yeah desktop and mobile viewports as we said if you're looking at doing this manually of course uh, the easiest way is to uh, open up chrome look at dev tools um, and then you can run a manual check obviously on a single page at a time um, at that stage or as part of an automated test now with test evolve you can add we we refer to these as audit checks um, okay, so we have two flavors of audit. Lighthouse is one. Um, accessibility with AxCore from DQ Systems is another. Okay, so we consider both of those under the uh, the audit 
testing type, uh, if you like. Okay. Um, now, as far as Test Evolve is concerned, the tool that I'm going to be using to show you this tonight, um, uh, this is available in both a, a Ruby, a TypeScript, and a, and a JavaScript uh, variant. Okay. So what I'm going to show you tonight, the exact process, um, is is going to universally work across all of those. Okay. So if you have a preference for JavaScript, you can open up a, a Test Evolve JavaScript project and, and do it that way. Um, or if you want to work with Ruby, TypeScript, uh, equally fine. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, on both public and private sites. So, um, yeah, public page, of course, uh, or, or sites or pages that re require authentication. Um, you can still run your Lighthouse checks um, in all of those circumstances. Okay. Really what it does, it gives you very nice, quick, easy wins. Um that you can work with your developers to implement across your application to gradually, over a period of time, improve uh, the quality of your application um, from those the standpoints or the perspectives of those four different categories. So you can improve performance, right? You can improve your SEO. You can definitely improve your accessibility. Um, and then the other one is the coding, uh, the best practices side of things as well. Um, so that's the fundamental reason. Why should you use it? It's free, it's open source, it's there. It helps you improve your application, simple as that. Very few downsides, as I say, we'll talk about how to use it sensibly and that's really the thing to focus on, but there's no reason not to start using this as another quality perspective for your application, okay? Um, and finally, it's, it's great to introduce um, non-technical audiences. Um, into this realm of quality, right? So um, being able to display and share a report with them that, that talks about performance in, in pretty simple terms, that talks about um, opportunities for SEO, uh, that talks about accessibility, um, all right? So just you know, bringing non-technical audiences uh, within your delivery team on that journey, um, sharing that information, right? Traceability, transparency of testing is always gonna be a good thing, okay? So yeah, many, many reasons, many compelling reasons to start using this um, in your testing practice, okay? Um, just finally, um, if you wanna give this a go today after kind of watching the webinar, um, and quite simply, you can go to our uh, testevolve.com uh, site. If you go uh, to our downloads section, which you'll find under the resources tab there, um, and then essentially you can download Testevolve Flare for either uh, Mac, there's a DMG, uh, there's an XE for Windows or a zipped file for Linux. Okay, so it's our cross-platform um, studio application that's gonna work on any of those operating systems. Um, once you've done that, head over to our uh, GitHub documentation pages um, and there you're gonna find a quick start guide uh, which will tell you everything you need to know um, as well, of course, maybe referring back to this webinar. Um, all right, that's great. So. I think now let's start actually digging in, looking at uh, how we implement this uh, within Test Evolve. Okay. Good. All right. Well, we're looking at um, Test Evolve Flare now. Okay. So this is our cross platform studio application. Um, what I'm going to show you now is how we can very quickly uh, record a brand new test. Um, and as we're doing that, we're going to insert uh, audit uh, checks, in this case, uh, Lighthouse checks on certain pages. Um, okay, so my uh, application under test is going to be the BBC uh, website. So I've already got a project open, so I'm just going to select my project here. Uh, here we go, Lighthouse webinar. Uh, webinar. Um, this is a Ruby project, so the first thing Flare is going to do is check my Ruby install. It's going to check um, any gem dependencies I have and make sure everything's as it should be. Okay, when you uh, first open a project, um, in Flare, what you're gonna see is features and scenarios, okay? Um, we work with uh, BDD, Behavior Driven Development, um, with Cucumber, Gherkin, so we have this feature scenario and this given when then step syntax for essentially our, our user stories, our end-to-end -end tests, um, okay? Um, so what I want to do now, um, when you open a new project, you'll always have some example um, features and scenarios just to get you going, allow you to run tests immediately. Uh, but what I want to show you now is how you record um, a brand new test from scratch, okay? So I'm going to come over here and click on the uh, develop module, okay? It's going to give me a different view of the features and scenarios that are already in the project, but it's going to allow me to create a new feature here as well, okay? So I'm going to call this uh, Lighthouse Checks 
or not the BBC website. Um, I'm going to OK that. It's going to assume correctly that I want to create a scenario, a BDD scenario, which I do. Um, that is going to be called something similar. So running Lighthouse audits for the BBC. I'm going to OK that. Um, and then it's going to straight away um, give me a pop up to say, right, start building out your given when then steps. Um, this isn't a functional test, so I'm going to keep it real simple. OK, I'm going to go to the home page. Um, I'm going to run a check. I'm going to traverse across multiple pages. But as far as my scenario, my steps are concerned, it'll just be um, two steps. OK, so given I load the BBC home page. And then a then step, which will be the remainder of my user journey. Then I can run multiple tests, lighthouse tests on many pages. Okay, so I'm just going to OK that. I don't need a third step, so let's just close that down. Uh, let's just move me up here. It's better get me out of the way. Um, all right, so my feature, Lighthouse Checks on the website, uh, scenario, running Lighthouse Audits for the BBC, um, and my two-step scenario. Given I load the BBC homepage, then I can run multiple Lighthouse tests on many pages. Okay, So um, I have the skeleton or the shell of my test. I don't have any code yet. Um, I'm going to come down here, expand that. Click on this uh, this guy down here to begin the recording process. Okay, so um, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a web view here. I'm going to click on the uh, record button. I'm going to fire in the uh, BBC URL. Okay, and I'm going to hit go. Um, so two things are happening. It's going to load that page in the web view. It's going to give me a pop-up that I don't want for now, so I'm going to click on that to make that go away. Chances are when I run that test back, it probably won't be there, so I'm going to delete that from my playback. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now, this blue thing, this blue selector list here is flashing because it wants me, or it's encouraging me, best practice, page object model, to um, associate this home page with a page class in my automation project. So I'm just going to come up here and I'm just going to call this home page. All right, so I create that page. Um, now all I'm going to do, this is still part of my first step, my given I load the BBC homepage, I am going to right click in uh, Flare and it's going to allow me to insert an audit check. So I do that and I give it a label. I'm also going to call it effectively the same thing as the, uh, the page class. So homepage and I add my check and that's all I need to do. Um, I'm now going to expand my then steps. I'm moving into the second half of my user journey. Okay, um, still recording at this point in time, um, but I'm now going to continue the the journey across the site. So uh, we're on the home page. We're going to click on to the uh, news page. Okay, um, it sees this as a new URL, so it sees it as a new page. So I'm going to give it a new page in my automation project. So we will just call this news page. We'll create that page. Uh, same process, I'm going to right click, I'm going to insert an audit check, and I'm going to call that uh, news page. And you'll see why we do this when we get to the reports. I add that check, um, that's all I'm doing on any of these pages. All right, so I'm going to look at sport, I'm going to look at weather. So here we go, we click on to uh, sport, and you'll see as I'm doing this, it's recording my uh, clicks in the website into uh, on, on the left here in Flare. What it's actually doing is writing these to my file system, to my automation project, my Ruby project on my machine, which I'll show you in a second. So I've clicked on to a new page. We're on the sports page. So let's create a page class. You don't have to do this. Um, it will allow you to record code directly to the step definitions and it will still work in exactly the same way. But what I'm starting to do now um, is create a low maintenance code base by respecting the page object model um, okay so it's always a good idea definitely something we'd recommend um, so I've just built my sports page I now need to insert an audit check uh, add that check and then finally I'm going to go to the weather page same process let's create a new page class weather page create page Right click, insert audit check. 
weather page. All right. Uh, now that's as far as I want to go. So I'm going to switch off the recording now. Just untoggle that. Um, from the currently open step, I can look at the, um, uh, the context menu and just close the browser here. All right, and then finally what I can do is just add a tag either at the feature or the scenario level. So why don't we call this um, uh, LH webinar, Lighthouse webinar. There we go, so I've got a tag. Um, and at this stage, let's just move me again down here. Um, at this stage, I can come out of the uh, recorder. I've done everything I need to do. Um, and you'll see now that here is the uh, the feature scenario that we just built. Okay, Lighthouse checks on the BBC website. Here's our scenario. Here's the tag that I've just added. There's the two steps. Um, all right, so we can look at running this test now. Um, what I'm going to show you quickly uh, as we come back to our file system um, is what's actually being done under the hood here. Okay. So as I was recording those steps. Um, Flare is talking to my file system continually. Okay, so you can see that this is the tag that I just added at the very end of the process. There's my feature name, my scenario name, um, and the two steps I recorded. Okay, as I step into each of these, um, I get a clear view in Ruby terms. This is Ruby, remember, um, of the, uh, the kind of the low code implementation that's been um, undertaken on your behalf. Um, so uh, we are instructing the browser to go to the site. Uh, we instructed the browser or um, test of old Spark to run an audit check with a label on the home page, so you can see that. And then everything else I did in the second step, you remember. Okay, so um, on the home page, uh, we clicked on an element that took us to the news page. Um, I created another audit check for that news page, and then I navigated, I checked, I navigated and I checked. Okay, so that's the recording uh, incorporating these audit checks. All right, so in just a second, we'll look at running that test and actually start to see the output now. All right. Okay, so uh, we're going to run that test now. Um, so a few things I just wanted to, <coughs> excuse me, draw your attention to first. So uh, in terms of configuration um, within a test evolve project, you're going to have this file here. This is an audits.yaml file. This is our configuration file for auditing. All right, so uh, we have that set true and we have that set with source of Lighthouse. Uh, the alternative is Axe. Okay, and we did a previous uh, webinar on doing accessibility testing with our Axe Core uh, integration. Um, specifically for Lighthouse, you then have this idea of thresholds. Okay, so um, we know that Lighthouse is going to run a check, it's going to give us scores back. Um, but within Test Evolve Spark, uh, which is our core framework, um, we allow the user to specify uh, threshold pass fail rates, if you like, for each of those, <coughs> excuse me, those four main categories. Um, all right, and they, they can be set independently of each other, of course. So um, if accessibility is particularly important, I might want to set that very, very high. Okay, 90 is the start point for everything, but I could set accessibility to 95, I could drop performance down to 50, I could set SEO to 65, you get the idea. Um, but what that's going to do, that has an impact on whether Test Evolve determines the test with those Lighthouse checks has actually passed or failed, whether the scenario itself, um, with the express purpose of running Lighthouse checks, whether it has passed or failed based upon the scores that come back. Um, okay. Ultimately, you're still going to get a report with all of the detail, uh, which we'll see. Um, but if you want to be slightly more determinant than that by saying, yep, I've got my scores and actually I'm now saying that it's failed because I didn't meet my performance target of 90 or I didn't meet my accessibility target of 95. You know, I determined that to be a failure. OK, so just purely from a, a test, pass or fail uh, point of view, from a, a continuous integration pipeline perspective, uh, that's quite a useful feature to have. OK, so that's the audit YAML. Um, just finally within the reporting.yaml, what I want to do now is actually push my data in real time to our Halo cloud reporting platform. OK, so I set uh, dashboard reporting to be uh, true. Um, I have a project ID. Um, I'm using a specific label of Lighthouse Webinar. Um, okay, and we talk about all of this in our documentation in terms of the configuration and how to run your tests. But these are the key things for this test. 
All right, and I'm just going to come back to my feature now, and quite simply, I'm going to uh, right click, I'm going to run that scenario. Let's see what it does. So you think about the journey we recorded here. Okay, so um, we are going to open up a Chrome browser. All right, we have to run Lighthouse checks in Chrome, of course. Um, so I go to the BBC homepage. All right, right now I'm auditing that homepage. It's running that audit check with a label of homepage. Okay, uh, now it will look at this from a desktop and a mobile perspective, but my configuration specifies desktop right now. So the actual scores and the report that I get up, uh, I get back are going to be for desktop. Okay, it's now navigated through to the news page. All right, uh, there's your mobile um, representation. Um, it's running the check, looking at the audit, uh, making the assessments from performance, SEO, etc. Um, it then returns. It's going to navigate to the sports page. This is my uh, my third page check. Uh, now, what we did really, if you think about this, we just ran a, a scenario uh, with nothing but audit checks. Now, of course, I might be, as I said earlier, this might be part of an end-to-end -end commerce flow. Okay, so I can combine these within a functional test. So if I'm checking out on Amazon, right, I can I can search my product, I can add to bag, all the normal functional assertions that I would normally make. I can still do that and then insert an audit check as well. Okay, so the way in which we've developed this, it allows you to really use a single scenario but shift the focus at runtime as to what it's looking at. Is it is it purely is it functional or is it focusing on uh, the auditing side? So that's a really useful feature. All right, so that test has run, uh, that test has passed, as we see in the bottom left here. I'm gonna come straight into um, Test Evolve Halo now. Okay, so this is our uh, real-time um, cloud reporting platform. Um, now we can see straight away, there's two things I'm gonna draw your attention to here. Um, we can see on the left here, Lighthouse Webinar. Um, this is the test we just ran. We can see that started one minute ago. That test is now complete. Earlier on today, I ran uh, another scenario, it had the same label of Lighthouse Webinar, but instead of using Lighthouse as the source, I was using Axe as the source. Okay, so it's just to show you um, different run types, different run groups. Now, we talked about Axe and accessibility in a previous webinar, which you can find on our YouTube channel, but for now, um, we're looking at this guy. So, um, I see this run card to start with, okay? Um, so, what I get here, even though I ran multiple checks on multiple pages, the first thing I see is the lowest score from any of those checks on any of those pages. So this run card gives me the worst case view, if you like. So in that case, one of those checks on one of those pages returned a score of 26 for performance. All right. Um, I can see the test is complete. Um, in turn, it's got some runtime properties here. So I can see Chrome was the browser. Um, I asked someone on Apple Mac, that was the operating system. It has a monitor or a desktop viewport icon here as opposed to mobile. Um, and it has the local icon here, all right? So I didn't run this via a browser stack integration, for example. All right, so uh, the whole platform works on a click-through uh, basis. So I can step into here now. And I start to see, this is what we call our run view. So I start to see a little bit more uh, information about that test that was uh, that was just executed, okay? Essentially on the right hand side here, we have our scenarios, okay? Um, here's the, and we, don't, we did only have the one scenario and it had two steps, all right? So this was the scenario. It tells me that I ran four checks, which I did, four checks, four pages. Uh, again, it's given me the lowest scores here for those categories from any of those checks on any of those pages, all right? You'll recall that I mentioned about tolerances and thresholds, so I set them to 90 across the board. So actually, the lowest scores for three of those categories were all below that 90 threshold, okay? So it only would have taken one of those to be, be below the threshold and it would have considered this test scenario a failure. Um, it's actually done it across three, so it's definitely a failed scenario as far as test of our runtime is concerned. Okay, we see our run properties in the top right. We see our lowest scores again here. Okay, we have a top left widget which talks about scenarios. So maybe I had, um, I could have had multiple scenarios in a feature. I could have done it on the BBC website. I could have done it on the Sky News website. I could have done it on the CNN website. They, each one of those could have been a scenario 
in that feature um, and I would still have that presentation of the results here. Now in the background, um, I've actually run this test multiple times. So what uh, Halo is going to give you is a run history uh, as well. Okay, um, So I can go back in time and click on any one of these run results and it will show me exactly what happened. Um, I have a very useful trend here. Um, now on your application, this is probably going to look very, very, very different, but I've essentially targeted the same website multiple times in a row um, earlier today. Um, and the one thing that is changing, you can see here that the, the performance has been changing um, from one test scenario to another. Um, but the run trends is great because it, it starts to give you this view of, again, thinking at a high level, right? That we're doing this from a continuous testing perspective. Maybe you're running it every day uh, or you know, upon every build of code to a particular environment. You start to see, generally speaking, are my lighthouse assessments, my audits getting better or are they getting worse? With continuous development, uh, new builds of code to a, a QA environment, what's happening, right? Now this trend graph is gonna give you a trend for each of the categories here. So, okay, fairly crudely here, we could say, oh, my, my performance appears to be dipping, okay? Everything else is remaining constant, so that's probably good. I prefer it if it was actually improving, all right? So if my scores were going up. Um, so it's just that early stage view of, of your the general picture of health from a lighthouse perspective, okay? But we really want to get into the detail now, looking at what lighthouse is giving you, okay? So I come through to the scenario. Um, I'm going to click on the scenario, um, and I get now what we call uh, a test run report, okay? So here was our uh, feature name at the top. Here was our um, scenario name. Uh, it's red, it failed because we know that three of those categories didn't meet their target thresholds. Um, there's the tag that we applied. Um, and Test Evolve Halo is all about traceability to your source requirement, transparency of your test coverage, right? So we will always show the feature, the scenario, the steps. So here's my given step, given I load the BBC homepage. Um, and then the then step, then I can run multiple lighthouse tests on many pages. And so you'll recall that in the first, in the given step, we did a single page and a single check. Here it is. Here's the particular scores for that check on the home page. Um, as I scroll down, we then had the remainder of our scenario, three pages, three checks within that second then step. All right. So we hit the news page, the sports page, the weather page. And you can see that I've got four categories worth of scoring for each of those checks on each of those pages, okay? So really, I, I wanna to start to understand now where the problems are. So I'm just, for now, we'll just focus on the homepage check. So I can now click in to uh, the homepage check here, and it's gonna open up, um, and the first thing it's gonna tell me, uh, it's a scrollable, expandable report, okay? So I can click and close and expand. Um, it's gonna take me through sequence, performance, accessibility, best practice, SEO. Um, and now I start to see all of the uh, diagnostics, if you like, or opportunities to improve things that could be fixed under each of those categories. Okay, so we're looking at performance. We've got a score of 56. Um, with performance in particular, it will give you uh, six core metrics. All right. Um, first content will paint, time to interactive, speed index, total blocking time, largest content will paint, and the cumulative layout shift. All right. These are the big six of performance uh, monitoring. It's going to give you measurements there on that for that page, that check on that page, right? This is the home page. All right, so our time to interactive on the BBC home page was 4.7 seconds. Now, we're not going to deep dive into all of these. That's you know, far too much content for, for one webinar. But it's just to give you an indication of what's going to start to come back. So as I scroll down, um, we can then really get into the weeds of, of what Lighthouse is telling us about our application. Okay, so... These are various diagnostics under the performance category, all right? So reduce the impact of third-party code. It's giving you an indication of, of what that is and the potential saving, the sizes. Um, avoid an excessive DOM size here, all right? Minimize main thread work, all right? These are the kind of things you're gonna to wanna to talk to developers about, and I'll show you a nice, simple way of doing that in just a second, um, all right? And as I said earlier, you're not it's you know, probably unlikely you're going to pick and fix on all of these, but some of the, these all have a weighting as far as Lighthouse is concerned. Um, okay, particularly for performance, um, these big six metrics, they have a weighting in terms of how much they influence the overall score. Okay, so you're going to want to um, 
address some of those as early quick wins, um, if you like. Okay, as I come down, so um, looks like they've got a perfect accessibility score there. Okay, so in Halo, we don't show the past audits, if you like, the ones that have been successful. We are just focused on showing you the things that can uh, be fixed. Okay, so nothing to show, no detail on accessibility. Best practices, score of 83. Um, it's suggesting that there's just a couple of things that we can focus on here. All right, so registering uh, registers and unload listener. Okay, uh, and also there were issues were logged in the issues panel in Chrome DevTools. Okay, so it's giving us detail there. These are all things that we could pass to a developer potentially. Um, and then SEO, okay, so it looks like maybe just one thing there. Uh, links do not have descriptive text. So I can expand on that. I can see a particular link on that homepage. Um, it's telling me that the link text simply said read more. Um, but from an SEO point of view, that's considered not optimal. Um, all right. So that was just for one check on one page. That was the homepage check. That was a single check in our given step. Um, we're going to get exactly the same thing for the other three checks, the other three um, pages that we ran in the second then step. All right, so you can just come and expand on these, okay? Now, I'm not going to talk about all of this detail, but suffice to say, <clears throat> there's plenty of it in there. Um, what I will show you quickly, when we run audits in uh, Test Evolve, we also produce um, a local HTML report, okay? So you've got reporting to Halo and you've got an HTML report. Um, what this will also give you though, um, Halo won't talk about uh, PWA or Progressive Web App. Um, and as I just said, uh, Halo is not gonna give you the, uh, the successful stuff. Um, but we do include that in the HTML report, all right? So if you did want to see the successful stuff, for example, um, there are 30 past audits uh, on a particular check on that homepage. These are all the things that are considered green, they're good to go, you know, nothing to see here. Um, but if you do wanna see that, um, or if you potentially you wanna see something that was failing previously that's been fixed and is now hopefully successful, you might wanna look at uh, this report just to see that level of information, okay? Now, in terms, let's just collapse that down again. So in terms of, um, okay, me as a tester, right? What do I do? How do I take this to the test, uh, to the development team? Well, I think you can probably clearly see that um, at this kind of level, it's gonna be far too low level, all right? That's just not gonna work, okay? So the decision that we took in terms of our JIRA integration, um, we offer our users the ability to raise uh, audit bugs at the step and the page level, all right? So this is a, as we said, this is a single check, single URL, single page that returned four scores across those four categories, okay? That is the level at which I'm most likely going to want to raise a bug, okay? So I can click on this raise bug button over here. Um, now it does all of the work for you. All you've got to do, if you've got this hooked up to a Jira instance, okay, and you can see our documentation for how you do that, all you've got to do is pick a project that you want to fire this bug uh, into. Um, it's going to pre-fill the summary for you, all right? So Lighthouse check issues. Um, it's going to append the page, so this was on the home page, and then in the description, it's going to it's going to grab the information from the scores that came back from Lighthouse. All right, so we see Lighthouse audit check. Um, it shows the label home page. It shows the URL bbc.co.uk. Obviously, this would be relevant to your uh, applications, and you saw me record the test. You saw how I uh, labeled the audit checks with certain pages. Okay, so that's all part of your test creation process. But now in the results. It's going to feed into the raising of the bug. Um, all right, and then it's going to record the scores for that particular check, 56, 100, 83, 92 for the four categories. Now, the really nice thing, it's going to give you um, a pre-filled URL here. Okay, so we'll see what happens. When I, uh, I confirm that, that's good to go. Um, I want to raise that bug. It's going to fire that into Jira for me. Um, it's going to tell me the bug, <coughs> excuse me, that's been raised. So uh, my project in Jira TEP1, my issue number is 961. Okay, so I can click straight through to this um, and you'll see here it's going to take me into Jira. Let's just move this out of the way again. And there's my bug that's been raised immediately. Okay, so this is the kind of thing you can put in front of a developer because it's not too low level. Right, It's talking about a page with a label. It's giving you the scores. 
But when they want the detail, which of course they will, all they've got to do is come here and click on this URL and it's going to take them right back in uh, to the report itself where they're going to find all of the information, all of the detail that they would need um, to start to consider where fixes need to be made. Um, all right, so a really nice, simple click through kind of um, halo to JIRA bug raising mechanism. Um, so it's just a real simple way for you as a tester to start to interact with the development team, raise these bugs, and then um, you know when you go through sprint planning, backlog prioritization, you start to decide, okay, we're gonna need to address maybe the, um, the SEO score on the homepage, right? Because it's not met our thresholds. Um, so just a real simple process there for, uh, for raising those bugs. All right, so let's just uh, finally focus on some specifics. Um, I made reference to the big six. Um, okay, so when we're looking at the performance scores, there are these six categories which uh, have a varied weighting uh, between them as to the um, the impact they have on the overall performance score. So uh, you can see their largest contentful paint, twenty five percent. Okay, that's one of the big ones. Uh, as is total blocking time, twenty five percent weighting. First contentful paint, fifteen percent, same as the speed index, fifteen uh, percent, same as time to interactive. 15% um, and then I guess we would say the least impactful would be the cumulative layout shift. Um, but I thought I'd just take uh, a couple of seconds really just to talk about each of those, right? what they are um, and in terms of fixing issues, you know, really what you're aiming for to bump that score up, certainly in the performance uh, side of things. So largest contentful paint, okay, well this represents the user perception of the loading experience. Um, okay, really. So to get your score where you want it to be, uh, or to, to have that 25% weighting positively impacting the score, um, you want to get that sub two and a half seconds. All right, that's the general recommendation. Total blocking time. Um, all right, what's this? This is the time between the first contentful paint and the time to interactive. Okay, so this represents um, the responsiveness to user input. Okay, so it's another one of the big, uh, the big two. Um, you're looking at under 300 milliseconds uh, for this to have a positive influence on the overall score for performance. Okay, first contentful paint. Um, the time measured when the first image or the text is visible. Okay, for that you're looking at under two seconds for a good score. Um, and the speed index is focused on uh, how much time is visible during the load. Okay, so a slightly lower weightage, 15%. Uh, and for that, you're looking at sub four seconds, really, 4.2 seconds. Time to interactive, um, this is focused on load responsiveness, so identifying where a page looks responsive but isn't yet. Um, you're looking at coming under three and a half or 3.8 seconds for a good uh, impact on the, the performance score there. Uh, and the cumulative layout shift, this is a user's perception of a page's visual stability. All right, this is the smallest, but still one of the big six, but it's a 5% weighting as opposed to 25% for some of these other metrics. Um, but really for that, you're looking at coming under 0.1 second. Um, okay, so let's just give you uh, a bit of an insight into just the performance side of things and uh, these six first metrics that you're going to see at the top of either the HTML report or the uh, the report, the performance section within Halo uh, itself. Okay. Um, all right. And then just to close out, really, we talked about um, perceived limitations. And I'm, I'm going to use the word perceived because, you know, as I've said there, more to the point how we need to use Lighthouse sensibly. Okay. We started off saying there's many, many compelling reasons as to why it's a great tool and an easy tool to use and to incorporate within your testing process and your, um, you know, your application delivery lifecycle. Definitely, you know, many, many pros. Um, any perceived limitations are chiefly around how we can use it in potentially the wrong way. Um, okay, so a definite limitation to start with though. So you, you can't use this for native apps, all right? So it's not gonna work on um, you know, Android or iOS apps. Um, but as we said, um, we can run this for web apps in a, in a desktop or a mobile viewport, okay? Um, one particular thing to be mindful of, um, the accessibility assessments that are made are limited within Lighthouse, um, okay? so. Um, we know that uh, there's probably a heavy focus on the WCAG side of things, 
um, but possibly not Section 508 or the ADA, for example. And this is predominantly why we also have um, uh, the ability to use Axe, Axe Core as a source within Test Evolve to do much, much deeper dive automated accessibility testing. All right. So when you look at your accessibility scores from Lighthouse, understand, you know, understand clearly um, that it is only scanning against a subset of rules. And you can you can read online about you know those those limitations, but be aware of that. Um, and the SEO side, all right. So SEO success is going to be dependent on many, many other factors, uh, as we know. Okay. And Google themselves have said that you're, you know, the SEO scoring, this really should be considered best practice, but it's not going to have a direct influence uh, on your ranking in terms of Google search terms. Um, all right. Now, I think coming on to the pragmatic ways of using this. OK, so as I say, don't be a slave to the score. All right. The score is just an indication. It's a very simple, easy to understand indication. But really what you want to be focused in on is, is looking at the report, looking at what it's telling you in each of these categories, performance, SEO, working with your developers. So here we say here, work pragmatically with your developers. Look at, you know, make an assessment of what Lighthouse is telling you and then decide, prioritize and fix uh, the things that are going to be most important. Okay, so maybe for you that's going to be in the accessibility category. Maybe that's where you start. Um, you know, maybe your coding best practices score is, is good from the get-go. Um, so I guess for most people it's probably going to focus on SEO, um, uh, accessibility and performance. And of those it's more likely to be, most likely to be accessibility and performance, right? So just work with your developers. As I say, you're not going to fix everything. Um, but the scores will take care of themselves as you progress this, as you go through cycles, through iterative agile sprints of, of, of running lighthouse checks, prioritizing and fixing specific issues in the categories and then releasing again and testing again. You're going to go through this, uh, the, these cycles, these agile sprints and your scores will improve by virtue of the fact that you're fixing the, the most important issues. So just you know, look at the underlying issues and the opportunities you have. Just don't obsess about the scores themselves. Um, okay. Um, we obviously we need to be clear, right? Lighthouse is a synthetic test. This is not a human being. Okay. So it's going to look at that application slightly differently. I think that that's um, that's reasonably straightforward. Um, what it won't do, of course, um, your application, you're going to have, um, I guess, a page waiting almost. You're going to have certain pages of your application. Um, that to a user are going to be more important than other pages. Um, now, Lighthouse isn't making that determination. It's looking at all of the pages you tell it to check, and it's just returning you some very objective scores. So it's not going to, again, it's this, this concept. It's not subjectively looking at your application like a user will, of course. Of course, it can't do, but it's just something to, rem uh, to, to remember. Um, and I think the final two things, performance scores will fluctuate. Okay, there are many things that, that can impact that. Uh, okay, environments, you know, network speeds, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so again, look at the underlying things it tells you more than the score. The score will change. Uh, and potentially, if you're running this through the CLI or using it as an automated test like we've shown you today, um, again, that may return a different performance score to if you do it through the Chrome browser, through DevTools, for example. So, you know, don't worry excessively about that just look at the underlying opportunities to fix and improve um, and then i think finally this is an interesting one but um, of course scoring algorithms will change over time so whilst i've shown you there that the um, the run history and the trend is incredibly useful just as a picture of health to say am i basically getting you know are my scores improving am i trending in the right direction and that's good to know um, but you also have to bear in mind that uh, the algorithms will change. And so uh, an assessment from six months ago, you are not going to be comparing like for like with an assessment now for two reasons. The algorithms changed and also your application is going to have changed. So just bear that in mind. But then, you know, that doesn't diminish the value of looking at your trend um, to see that you are, you know, your scores are generally improving. You're, you know, you may set... Um, project delivery thresholds for SEO for performance you know and you want to see that you're getting to that point so I think you can you can probably see and understand that the majority of these perceived limitations are around our use of Lighthouse uh, as a tool not not the information that it's returning to us um, okay
So I want to thank you for your time. That's really everything I want to talk to you about today. So um, uh, thank you so much. Um, find us at testevolve.com and uh, look at our um, GitHub doc documentation. We do offer a, a free 90 day uh, evaluation. So just go to testevolve.com slash try. Um, you can download Flare. You'll be up and running in no time at all. Uh, and of course, hit us up on uh, social media or reach out to us on our, um, find me at uh, james.readhead at testevolve.com or our support channel at info at testevolve.com and we'll be only too pleased uh, to help you. Um, but hopefully what I've shown you today is that um, you can be up and running very, very quickly and building an automated test in no time at all, adding lighthouse checks and then seeing the value from your real-time reporting. You've got a nice, easy mechanism to raise a bug with the developer there. Um, and then I think clearly as you, you can incorporate that into your continuous integration pipeline uh, and see the benefits over a period of time. So um, thank you for your time and uh, look forward to seeing you shortly.